up everybody and welcome back to Studio Reef. It's been a long time and the sometimes just about over. So usually uh, this time of year is when you get back indoors and it's starting to get cold outside. Uh, so you kind of pick up the damage that has been done over summer to your tanks. I know that I for one am really good at just leaving the tank by itself all summer. Besides some minor heat issues, it's, it's usually going to be okay. Uh, of course I empty my skimmer and stuff like that, but only minor stuff. I do the dosing and uh, empty the skimmer crop, but besides that I've just left the tank by itself completely all summer. So it's definitely time to frag, it's time to clean up the tank, and it's also time to do some of the yearly maintenance that I've been slagging off for the last uh, few months. So join me for this episode where we're gonna go through some of the maintenance stuff and uh, see how badly the, the tank's doing. So basically just getting an overall view of what's about to go down here it's come to mind that I have to sort of segregate this into multiple videos otherwise I could just make one long video for one hour of doing all the stuff but I'll be uh, cutting it into small bits and putting the bits together that make sense sort of I hope that makes sense to you so first off is uh, sort of a damage control uh, just having a visual look at the tank seeing if uh, what needs to be done and of course I need to clean the glass uh, as you can see on the bottom here is a bit of algae uh, in some areas so that shows me that I have uh, some sort of uh, phosphates present silicates or nitrates so I'll be measuring for those but because I will have to do the first uh, water change in hold on now three years so quick disclaimer before you guys hack me to bits there's uh, some things that I do that is not recommended in the overall uh, industry, hobby or whatever. Um, I'd like to emphasize that I'm not telling you to do this, it's just how I do it. My tank is three years old, I've never ever done a water change on it. I've only kept my nitrates and phosphates levels uh, low to the point where they are not measurable. So doing that and replenishing all the minerals that needs to go into the tank, I don't see any reason to do water changes. So now there is one reason and I'd like to show you that because uh, occasionally every system gets old enough to the point where there is some sort of detritus buildup, typically in the sump and that's exactly where I have my detritus buildup. So I have to make uh, a water change not for the reason of changing the values in the water but because there's a detritus buildup that might lead to some sort of nitrate outbreak. Just have a look at how bad this actually is turning out to be. And you can see if I just stir this around a bit, there's a bunch of detritus here. So we're gonna get that detritus out of the way uh, by doing a water change and vacuum it out. So I have uh, my big bucket here, which I'm going to prepare uh, salt water in. It's uh, pretty huge, but it gets the job done. Uh, I have purchased some salt, and this is the salt I use uh, always. So uh, this is the salt that comes with the most uh, minerals in it, and that's why it's the probably most expensive on the market, but it's the one I've always used uh, when I start up new systems anyway. So I'm going to stick to what works for me. So we are in my bathroom right now and this is where I make the RODI water for my tank and that's for the ATO and now it's going to be for the big water change that I'm going to do. So before we get started I'd like to show you guys something I did. I had this made uh, so I don't have to switch these two. This is the washing machine that's uh, right here. I had these two connected on the same one so I, I had to take one out and put the other one on which led to sometimes uh, conflicts between washing clothes and uh, yeah, you get the picture. Now I just turn this and I get water. So that's really nice. Uh, I recommend getting that for anyone 
who has that same problem. So before we can get uh, any water done, I'd like to show you that this just goes down here and it comes through here and that's where I have uh, this system. But on the last stage of the RODI, it's my DI filter and that is turning red. You can see the media here, so it's time to replenish that in order to maintain my zero TDS. Now, this one is only half full, so I can probably just only uh, replenish half of it, but still it's gonna take it to zero TDS as long as there's some new fresh media in there. Uh, but in the near future, I'll have to change all of it though. This usually lasts me a couple of months and then it starts turning uh, like this color purplish red here. So that means it's time to go. So in order to do this, what I usually just do is take a plastic bag, um, open this up and uh, start digging it out with a spoon and getting the new filter in there, which is in here. I'll show you guys. There you go. Maybe you can tell in there that it's, it, this is green when it comes in and then it changes to red when it's used up. So. Right guys, so on that note, I think I'll end this part one clip here and uh, maybe it's gonna be a four part series or something. I have a lot to do, so it's time to roll up the sleeves and I'm gonna shoot everything for you guys so you can come back each week and see what I'm doing. So yeah, it's really good to be back. Uh, special thanks to CJ who did a shout out to my channel and uh, so many people came over. So uh, thanks for subscribing guys. I'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Bye bye.